of all the jungle cruises you can take in the Amazon, this one is undoubtedly the cheapest, but also the most thrilling. Heads up, coming through. Look out! Marauders, natives. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. The backside of water. It's the eighth wonder of the world. Not a good time. My brother and I are looking for passage up river. Please go away. I have a lot of money. <clears throat> We're headed up river to Lagrimas de Cristal. Be honest, it's not a fun vacation. But you're gonna beg me to turn back. 10,000 to bring you there alive. Dead, it's 15,000. Why should I pay more dead? Dead, I'd have to carry you. Dead's a lot harder. A, B, N. It's headphones nailed! Welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for the 2021 film Jungle Cruise. So it's finally available for streaming for all people on Disney Plus's subscription service. So if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you don't have to pay any extra money um, anymore to be able to watch the film. So I gave it a watch to kind of see how the film compares to the ride, see how the film stands out overall as its own film, especially since I went on the Jungle Cruise ride at Disneyland for the first time this year. And basically just to see how good or bad of a film it is. So I want to say, to start jump, start it off right off the bat, is that I enjoyed the film very much. They brought a lot of the look and feel of the ride into the film. Mostly in the first third of the film. But they rounded out nicely and established a good film and set of lore and all of that around the ride itself. So... When you're watching the film, it kind of starts along the lines of Stargate SG-1, or sorry, the Stargate film, the first one when we have Daniel Jackson presenting his alternate ideas of the uh, pyramids at Egypt to a group of archaeologists. In this case, we have um, Emily Blunt's character and her brother trying to talk about how this uh, pink leaf thing is real. And she's trying to present it by her brother because no one takes her seriously as she's a woman. And um, at this point in history, it's not really something that is widely accepted as um, someone to listen to. So from there, we move on over to the Rock's character as the skipper of a boat. And basically a quick recreation of the Jungle Cruise ride, which they present very well. He has the same corny jokes as the skippers give on the Jungle Cruise ride, like the backside of water. Um, and generally just the corniness and um, um, overall presentation of the ride is brought over well into the film, to, especially to the point when late, even later in the film they bring up a joke about the headhunters and washing your head and things like that. So even though you have heard a bunch of corny jokes, they take it that one step further and one corny joke further like they do on the ride. So by this point, we're now about a third to maybe a quarter of the way or a quarter or to a third of the way through the film. And then we jump into more of the history and um, backstory and all of that as far as what's going on, why Emily Blunt wants to find this mythical um, elixir, why... Um, the Rock doesn't want to go there and all of that. So in watching the film, basically once we've ha once we have Emily Blunt's character hiring the Rock, it essentially turns into the a bu the bulk of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean films merged into one. So it brings the fun and good times of Curse of the Black Pearl, but then mixes in a lot of the stuff as far as the stuff with Salazar, um, and then the stuff with the storyline of lose of um, Jack Sparrow losing the Black Pearl, and um, the Tiger being the Rock's friend, and things like that. So overall, it essentially a lot of the elements and good elements that you see um, that you might have enjoyed from the Pirates of the Caribbean films are brought over very well into this and kind of it's kind of like merging the best of two worlds so applying 
good elements from, from Pirates of the Caribbean, but the good times and acting of El- Emily Blunt and The Rock. So overall, the film actually goes very quickly, and you don't really um, find, or I don't really find any dull points in the film. It's just a couple of time points in the film you wonder why it looks it sounds very familiar, and it's because they're applying the Juggle Cruise jokes to a Pirates of the Caribbean template. And even reading online, it feels someone was saying that it feels like a spiritual successor to the Pirates of the Caribbean films. So I'm kind of curious to see if they start doing that for this, where they start bringing out more Jungle Cruise rides, where they potentially and i this feels kind of limited but they potentially go on different um go down different rivers to uh find different bits of lore and try to find out different things and that's kind of a pseudo tease at the end of the film when the rock does go with emily blunt to england and learns how to drive so they could potentially um do things on the channel between um, England and France. They can go to Egypt to go down the Nile, go into India to go down the Ganges River and things like that to kind of have different or basically pull in the lore and spiritual mythology of various cultures and the rivers in each of those cultures. So potentially if you want to do, you know, something per continent to go through the seven continents of the world and do a film per continent and or something along those lines, which would actually be something um, that would interest me greatly. So just something to think about there, which I can see that they, if they do a Jungle Cruise franchise like they did with Pirates of the Caribbean, where the first one was built on the, or kind of expanding, making a movie out of the ride and making it a test run to see if it's feasible and people, if people will like it, and then taking it from there to expand the franchise and lore and make um the rock and emily blunt globe trotting jungle crew skipper so the rock is keeps his role as a skipper and then emily blunt is kind of the archaeologist or mythologist or um something along those lines so kind of like um the mummy meets indiana jones so that's all there is for this particular review so as far as grading the film i'd probably give it a good grade of about an a minus right at least 90 to 95 percent it's basically a good time enjoyable the rock delivers the jokes as a skipper very well and makes it very fun there's a lot of heart he brings when he's telling this his story about why he doesn't bleed and how he's 400 years old Emily Blunt's character is good as far as um, being the a person out of time. Um, her brother was kind of the trope of the film that you knew that at some point he was going to get captured and tell the bad guy the plan and lead the bad guy to the goal of where um, Emily Blunt's character is trying to go. So all in all, in general, I mean... It, it, Suppose while you would think that it's a film full full of you know trope fest corny jokes and that sort of stuff, as far as basing it on the ride and translating the corny jokes and the skippers and all the various elements, generally works very well. And I think that's why it made for a generally fun film to watch. So that's all there is for this particular review. And actually, before I end it, um, so I would recommend watching the film if you want good times, a fun film, uh, silly jokes, and all of that good stuff, and is a good watch for the whole family. So that's all there is for this particular review, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HitFilmsNeal.Reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.